Sonic, the heart of your system. Okay, 9900K. We have to talk about the solar TIM or so called S TIM. TIM is thermal interface material, so TIM can be either a thermal paste or a soldered interface. So in this case, we're using indium as a solder material to improve the thermal conductivity between the chip and the IHS. So we know from the Intel presentation that the 9900K or the Intel 9th gen is completely soldered and from my point of view I expected the temperatures to be really great compared to an 8700K. I pretty much expected uh, liquid metal temperatures but when I tested my first CPU like four, five, six weeks ago I was really impressed that the CPU was running so hot. First I thought okay it's maybe the power consumption because if we push the CPU to 5G then we see power consumptions of 180 to 220 watt which surely is a lot but even then if we used an AIO with 360 radiator the temperatures would easily hit 90 degrees or even 95 degrees celsius under load and then I talked to other medias and they experienced exactly the same because First, I was not even sure if it's just my sample or if it's the 9th gen overall. So then I thought, okay, let's just go ahead and delete the 9900K and see what the solar team looks like. And first of all, if we just take a look at the CPU itself, we already noticed that the, um, the heat spreader shape is different compared to the 8700K. We can also see that the PCB changed, so the PCB is a little bit thicker than before. The deleting process is exactly the same as before, so we can just use a delete IMA2, it's still compatible and then we simply push against, against the IHS. We don't even have to heat up the CPU, just metal fatigue works, so we just push from one side. I tested this with 8 CPUs in total by now, all of them worked fine. For some CPUs it's a little bit more difficult to, to apply force, so in that case you just push like 1 or 2 millimeters from one side, turn around the CPU by 180 degrees and push from the other side and then it's a lot easier than just applying force on one side, so metal fatigue really helps here. Once we deleted the CPU we can clearly see that the CPU obviously has been soldered, we see the gold plating inside the heat spreader, it looks exactly what we expected. Even on the CPU side, it looks exactly the way I expected it. For example, if we compare it to an AMD Ryzen, it looks exactly the same. So we have the solar team there, which uh, is supposed to be indium. We can also see some marks in the indium, which are basically from the force that we apply from the side when we move the IHS. And we can also see some flux residues around the die, which are left from the soldering process. So if we take a look at the CPU itself, we have to consider the CPU as a system. So basically we have the silicon on the bottom, then we have the solar team in between, which is indium, and then we have the heat spreader on top, which is copper, nickel plated typically. So in the system, we have silicon with a thermal conductivity of about 150, and then we have the indium, which typically has a um, conductivity of about 80, and then we have copper, which has something between 350 to up to 400, depending what kind of exact copper alloy they are using. So in this system, the best thermal conductivity is the copper, so basically this is not a limiting factor. The silicon is kind of okay with 150, but then the indium only has about 80 watt per meter Kelvin, so that's in our system the limiting factor. And also the thickness of the layer is really important because it's a linear aspect. Um, the thinner the material, the better the thermal conductivity becomes. So if we make the solar tim thinner, in theory, the performance should be better, the temperatures overall should be lower. So my idea was to remove the IHS, to remove the glue, which is positioned between the PCB and the IHS, just peel off all the glue, remove it, and then heat up the CPU again and re-solder the IHS, but with a thinner la layer because we removed the glue, so we can um, make the layer a bit thinner by like 0.2 millimeters. So I took a Delidime 2 which is made out of aluminium, so it's no problem to heat it up. I placed a temperature sensor on the back to keep track of the temperature, placed the CPU in there, used the frame to apply pressure directly in the middle of the IHS, already positioned it correctly, heated up the CPU backside or the backside of the Delidime to about 155 degrees Celsius. Then I knew that the IHS must be a lot warmer obviously because this is where the direct heat is applied from the heat gun. Then let the CPU cool down and I went into Windows um, because I wanted to check what the temperatures looked like. To my surprise the temperatures were really bad, so one of the cores immediately jumped to 100 degrees Celsius while running Cinebench, so I knew that something had gone wrong. 
So I decided to delete the CPU again, I checked it. By the way, when I was soldering it back, I also used some flux, which I got from Indium Corporation, which is the stuff I used for when I tried to solder a CPU already, the 8700K, this is one of my previous videos if you want to check it out. Um, I got a re Indium research kit which you need for soldering a CPU for example and there I had a selection of fluxes and I used the proper one to also uh, solder the CPU so I also added some flux just so you, so you know what I did. And after I opened the CPU again I could see that a lot of the Indium squeezed out to the side so that's what we can see. The thick indium layer was pushed out to the side. We lowered the indium layer quite significantly, but I think there was almost no indium left probably. Maybe some of the areas were not even covered with indium. So yeah, I think the solder connection was just really bad. And for sure there is a reason why Intel is using a solder preform thickness of 0.5 millimeters. And I think it's not only because it has to be perfectly between the whole surface, it's also to compensate shrinking and expanding. So the problem is that silicon and copper, so the chip and the IHS, are expanding on different rates. So if we have a lot of temperature cycles, if you heat up your CPU, if it cools down, especially if the heat spreader is a lot colder than the chip, we will have some tension between both and the indium has to be thick enough to be flexible enough to catch up this tension. And if it's too small, if it's too thin, it will simply crack. So I think that's what happened in this case and it just shows that a too thin solder preform will not work. So then I just decided to remove the indium with a blade the way I did it usually before, for example with an 1800X or 2700X. Just the same procedure, so peel off the indium with a blade carefully and make sure the surface is perfectly flat. Also use a little bit of sandpaper in the end. It's a special sandpaper of course, um, which you can use to grind down silicon. And I use this to flatten the surface completely. And then I applied a liquid metal in the end, in detail the Thermagusli conductor out, and put back the IHS to check what the temperatures would be. My 9900K sample was not a great one in general, so it would only run 4.8 at about 1.25 volt. It still produces quite a lot of heat. It would require a lot higher voltage to clock higher, but um, the problem is that we reach those very high temperatures so quickly. So that's why we are limited by the core voltage and also limited by the temperature. That's why I was not able to clock the CPU higher on stock. But after applying liquid metal, we lowered the temperature by 8 degrees Celsius, which is okay, um, considering that it's across the average course. So this time I decided not to go by the maximum core temperature. I just recorded 10 minutes of Prime95 Prime with hardware info. Then I took the average temperature across the course and then I took the average of that. So that should give us a bit better indication than just using the max temperature of the course because sometimes you see one core just spiking up for a millisecond and then goes down by 5 degrees Celsius. So the maximum core temperature is not really a great indicator. I think that's why I went for the average core temperature in this case. So then I asked myself, is it only the 9900K which is running so hot or is maybe the 6 core, the 9600K better? So I also took a retail 9600K, deleted the CPU and did exactly the same testing there. And I also noticed that the 9600K is also running quite hot. And once I deleted it, I also found out that this is also an 8 core die. It's exactly the same die size as a 9900K. So it's just an 8 core die with two disabled cores. And then when I deleted the 9600K, I noticed that not only the PCB is thicker, also the chip is thicker. So the PCB size changed from about 0.8 millimeter to about 1.1 millimeter, which is back to what we've seen at Haswell, which is actually a great thing because the CPU gets a lot more stable. If we press it into the socket, especially with coolers that are exceeding the socket specs, this is a lot safer. So having a thicker PCB, I think is good. But then I found out that the chip is thicker. If I measured the 8700K die, I found out that the die thickness is 0.42 millimeters. And then I measured the die thickness of the 9600K and it was 0.87 millimeters. And now I have to remind you again of what we've been talking about previously. So if we take a look at the CPU in a perspective of it being a system, then we have the silicon on the bottom, we have the thermal interface material, and then we have the heat spreader. And as I told you before, the silicon with like 140 to 150 thermal conductivity is not bad, but it's also not great. The copper has doubled the thermal conductivity. So if we make the chip a lot thinner, the thermal conductivity between both services should be a lot better because essentially 
the circuits are on the bottom of the chip, they're not on top, they're on the bottom. So the heat has to go through the whole chip, it has to go through the 0.8 millimeters of silicon. And if this was thinner, the thermal conductivity would be better. You can probably guess it already, but then I decided to also grind down the 9600K to check if this is even benefiting, if my theory is correct that a thinner chip would actually help. So I grinded down the chip the same way I did it with the 7920X, so took a 40 micrometer diamond uh, polishing or diamond grinding film, grinded down the CPU, the whole procedure took about one hour um, just by lowering the CPU by 0.15 millimeter, that's not really a lot, but considering that the total thickness is 0.8 millimeter, percentage-wise, it's still quite a lot. Then I did some temperature testing and then I grinded down the chip again by a total of 0.2 millimeters, so it's almost one-fourth, which we removed from the CPU die, checked it again, and the temperatures were really, really interesting. So the base across all cores was 96.5 degrees Celsius and this is prime 95 at 5G at 1.35 volt running for 10 minutes with small FFT size of 12K. After the lidding we have a temperature across all cores of 88.5 degrees Celsius. So we already lowered the temperature by 8 degrees Celsius just by the lidding. Keep in mind that some of the cores might have a smaller and some might have a bigger profit from the lidding. So you will see maybe a benefit of 6 degrees Celsius on one core and maybe 12 degrees Celsius on another core. After grinding down the chip by 0.15 millimeter, the resulting temperature was 84.66 degrees Celsius across all cores. And after grinding down by 0.2 millimeters total, the temperature dropped to 83 degrees Celsius. So we can see we almost lowered the temperature by 5 degrees Celsius by lowering the chip size by one fourth. If we think about that we could lower it by another 0.2 millimeter, which is then essentially the same height as an 8700K, and we could potentially also gain another 5 degrees Celsius there, the total difference from stock to the lidding to grinding down is again almost like 15 to 20 degrees Celsius. So the big question that remains is, why the hell is this chip so damn thick? I really have no idea. Um, I can only think of like structural support Especially, I'm not even sure if soldering costs this, like is, is a thicker chip needed to solder a chip? Is it needed to give it more structure because there will be some tension from the soldering? Or is it required because the die is larger? Because previously we had an 8700K with die size of 9.2 times 16.6 millimeter and now the 9900K has a die size of 9.2 times 19.4 millimeter. So it's a bit larger and the question is, is a thicker die required for a larger die or what is the reason why Intel went for double the silicon thickness and I'm pretty sure that some of the temperatures we will see um, during the next days especially when all the launch reviews are out I'm pretty sure that one of the reasons why those CPUs are so much hotter than an 8700K is not only the reason that they have two additional cores it's also the reason that the CPU die is thicker so the question is, did we fool ourselves by pushing Intel to get soldered CPUs? Did we play ourselves because we asked for it and now the die is thicker um, because they had to solder it and if it was the same as an 8700K, it was, if it was lower, would we still see better results if we deleted it? I'm really not sure um, if this was the right step. It's absolutely interesting. If you have any more information or theories about this, feel free to put it down in the comments below. For now, the question is, is it um, recommended to delete those chips? If you're just an average gamer, if you just want to have your CPU running stable, let's say at 4.8, 4.9 gigahertz, you should be safe with the CPU that is not deleted. But if you want to run for best performance available, if you're maybe aiming for 5.2, 5.3 gigahertz um, at the lowest temperatures possible with custom water cooling, if you're attempting to break any kind of benchmark records, then probably you will have to delete your chip. And uh, that's very interesting. I'm, I did not expect that I, would be, that I would sit here and tell you that we have to probably delete a soldered CPU. What I can also tell you is that the CPUs that we're selling under their Bauer brand at Case King will also be deleted. So we offer 9600K, 9700K, 9900K from today on in our shop. All of them are pre-tested and all of them will be deleted because we need this for our systems. We offer systems with very high performance, very high clocks. And if we are aiming to be 
the people who are offering the highest performance, then we have to delete the chips because sometimes that's the way how you get the extra 100 megahertz. And uh, yeah, I think there is no way around it for the best CPU clocks. Let me think what you think about this video and the results. I was personally really surprised, but it was really interesting to see that the chip for some reason is thicker, that the results are not as great as I expected. Let me know in the comments down below. See you soon.